Okay, you've seen us apply our ultimate top coat on several countertops. And if you haven't, you really need to go check those videos out. But today, you're gonna see us apply it over wood and concrete. In this video, Mike Quist is not only gonna show us how to apply the ultimate top coat, but also he's gonna give us a couple tricks of the trade on making any surface in your space come to life and stand the test of time with the ultimate durability. Stay tuned, enjoy the video. Guys, do you wanna learn how to use natural wood like a real resin artist? This is koa wood. It's right here on the big island, Hawaii. That's what these cabinets are made out of. That's what this stair structure is made out of. And that's what is impervious to the ocean elements that create some of that longevity that you're gonna find in this type of atmosphere. So I love koa wood and so do the locals. It's really known here and I wanted a wall cap that opened up the view. There used to be a wall right here in this kitchen so you felt blocked away from the guests and from your entertaining and most importantly from the whales you see right here from the lanai. So we opened that up, we moved the wires and the pipes, we created a concrete tree and we accented it with something that goes perfectly with this kitchen. I also left it live edge and I did a resin accent up front. The reason I did this is because it increases the perceived value of this space. It makes you feel like you're living in functional art. As you add these elements, it really sets your property apart from the cookie cutter that you'll typically see. Think outside the box, have fun with your design, and remember, this is stone coat. It's forgiving. We have video after video teaching you the do-it-yourself tips and tricks that you need to know to go pro. I'm using the delicate surface tape, that way none of my fresh paint gets messed up or anything like that. I'm actually masking off underneath here because I will roll that ultimate top coat under the edge here just for that extra protection and it will feel the same. You know, people see with their hands as well as their eyes. So people like to feel that different design element and when you wrap that piece, it just takes you to that next level. So I'm just using that delicate surface removal tape and I'm doing a perimeter and then I'll use my handy masker to finish masking this off. That way, if I do have any drips, I'm not in a panic trying to clean that up. The nice thing about the Ultimate Top Coat is you do have enough working time to wipe up any spills or mistakes. It's no big deal. It is a water-based product, so there's not noxious smells, but it's extremely durable. If you haven't seen our reviews on the Ultimate Top Coat, go check us out at the Insiders Group and you will see how many pros use this product every single day. We've made this simple enough for a do-it-yourselfer because it is a roll-on system. We use two roller technique. I'll use a dry roller and a wet roller. It's just a microfiber roller that we're gonna first saturate and get this all wet and then I'll come back with a roller that we haven't dipped into our ultimate top coat and basically roll off any excess leaving a thin film that's going to be super durable and it's going to dry even absent of lap lines. That's the key and that's how you make it look like a pro. Sprayed this finish on and it'll look flawless. All right, you see I left a little bit of a shiny spot here and here. You just wanna remove that so the Ultimate Top Coat has a fantastic bond. That's key. Rough it up, scuff it up, and you'll get a bond that lasts a lifetime. <laughs> You wanna remove any lint off that roller. Just go ahead and roll it on some sticky adhesive tape. You remove any of those little boogers and that will prep your roller so that when you apply the Ultimate Top Coat, you don't have anything release off of your roller onto your surface. That's a pro tip and again, that's how you get a finish that looks like it was applied with the HVLP sprayer. 
Hey, what's up everybody? Luke here popping in real quick just to let you know that this is obviously not the first step to this process. So if you'd like to see how my quist broke down that whole wall, took the koa wood from scratch, cut it up, put resin in it and on it, made the pillar look like a tree trunk, then go check out that video where he teaches you step by step how to do it from scratch. It's pretty sick. You don't want to miss it. We'll see you there. You got this. Our ultimate top coat is a two to one ratio. Two parts resin to one part hardener. I'm gonna mix just enough of what I need for this wall cap and this pillar. I'm gonna roll that on, I'm gonna really heavily saturate the product and then I'm gonna remove that extra saturation with my dry roller. By applying too little material, you'll get dry spots and inconsistencies. That's a pro tip. Don't withhold the product, get it on wet and dry it up and you're gonna get a really good finish. I'm gonna mix part A up before I apply it into my cup. That way I get any of our matting agent or the secret sauce that gives me that lower sheen level. It needs to be intermixed throughout the bottle. So shake it before you bake it and let's have some fun. I'm improvising on a stir stick. I got a flat bar in my toolbox. I forgot my stir stick. I'm not gonna let that hold up my production punch perfectionism in the face and let's get this project done. I clean my stir stick, AKA my flat bar prior to mixing. I'm gonna mix for about two minutes and then I'm gonna add a little bit of H2O. I'm gonna get some water in there to thin it down to the consistency that I like. Mitch, you've used this Ultimate Top Coat on a lot of the pieces you've made. Yeah, I did them on a bunch of pieces I've made and as well as in Ken's Kitchen, and it looked fantastic. Don't you love the durability? And you know, that, that that's what we were searching for for years is what's the most durable uh, finish? And we've done a lot of natural stone and durability is key in a kitchen. It is, it, it very much so. That's the biggest question we received is, can I set hot pots on my granite? And yes and you can set hot pots directly on the ultimate top coat once cured. All right, I'm gonna add a little bit of water here. Yeah, that's good. You don't need much and it thins it right up. And then I'm gonna put this into a paint tray that I've already cleaned out. Mitch, do you wanna wipe any excess? There's a little bit of boogers on here. We'll just wipe that one final time. And you're gonna wanna just do one final wipe with a dry rag right before you finish this project. We actually, uh, we actually added some of our metallic right here in the front to go with this natural stone that was already here. And I'm loving how that comes out, but I'll show you what that looks like after we apply the top coat. It'll make it pop even more than that. Pro tip, I'm gonna start high and work my way down. That way if I have any drips from my roller that happen to land on the surface, I'm gonna roll that out anyways, and I won't ruin a perfectly dry rolled finish that I've already got to my liking. Start high and work your way down. I'm gonna designate the roller that has tape on it as my wet roller, and the one that doesn't will be my dry roller. It's that complicated. Put a piece of tape and you'll keep your rollers segregated and you'll know which one's which. Make sure that roller is, is not bound up. If you shove it too hard to the elbow, you'll get it too tight. So make sure it rolls nice and smooth for me, and I'm just gonna push it in my material and really saturate this roller, and then I'm gonna roll off kind of any excess, and I have a roller that's primed and ready to rock. Boy, this is about the easiest DIY project I've ever done. You just simply roll this on and then I'm gonna take that dry roller and get anything off. You know, but this does have a lot of undulations, ins and outs and what have yous. So I'm gonna go ahead and make sure I saturate everything. And I'll probably start on one side and just work my way around this piece. I wanna know guys in the comments below, what do you think of my fake tree? Does it look realistic or not? And did I nail the color? Look at it compared to my Koa wood cabinets and let me know, is this something that you would like to learn more about? Would you like to learn how to make a tree out of concrete in your kitchen?
Give me that dry roller right away. All right, we threw in an audible. I got a second dry roller ready because my first dry roller got a little bit more saturated than I typically prefer. So I'm rolling it wet. Mitch is automatically rolling it dry really quickly. Just getting any lap lines out of that thing. I'm gonna let this dry. I'll take down my masking in a few hours after it's dry to the touch. After that, I'll be ready to use it the next day. Okay, it's the next day. The ultimate top coat is dry and ready for use and abuse. I'm gonna de-prep what Mike did yesterday to protect his walls. When removing tape, use caution because this is fresh paint. And now back to Mike. Guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comments, do you wanna learn how to do concrete trees? You see this channel, it's about how to use stone coat epoxy on countertops, tabletops, desktops, floors, wall accents, and more. Learn how to do concrete trees like a pro. Now you know, enjoy the next video. Guys, until next time from Stone Coat Countertops, you got this. We'll see you on that next video.